Transmitting value to EOAs and contracts. When you construct an Ethereum transaction that contains a value, it is the equivalent of a payment. Such transactions behave differently depending on whether the destination address is a contract or not. For EOA addresses, or rather for any address that isn't flagged as a contract on the blockchain, Ethereum will record a state change, adding the value you sent to the balance of the address. If the address has not been seen before, it will be added to the client's internal representation of the state, and its balance initialized to the value of your payment. If the destination address is a contract, then the EVM will execute the contract and will attempt to call the function named in the data payload of your transaction. If there is no data in your transaction, the EVM will call a fallback function and, if that function is payable, will execute it to determine what to do next. If there is no code in fallback function, then the effect of the transaction will be to increase the balance of the contract exactly like a payment to a wallet. If there is no fallback function or non-payable fallback function, then the transaction will be reverted. A contract can reject incoming payments by throwing an exception immediately when a function is called, or as determined by conditions coded in a function. If the function terminates successfully without an exception, then the contract state is updated to reflect an increase in the contract's ether balance. Transmitting a data payload to an EOA or contract. When your transaction contains data, it is most likely addressed to a contract address. That doesn't mean you cannot send a data payload to an EOA. That is completely valid in the Ethereum protocol. However, in that case, the interpretation of the data is up to the wallet you use to access the EOA. It is ignored by the Ethereum protocol. Most wallets also ignore any data received in a transaction to an EOA they control. In the future, it is possible that standards may emerge that allow wallets to interpret data the way contracts do, thereby allowing transactions to invoke function running inside user wallets. The critical difference is that any interpretation of the data payload by an EOA is not subject to Ethereum's consensus rules, unlike a contract execution. For now, let's assume your transaction is delivering data to a contract address. In that case, the data will be interpreted by the EVM as a contract invocation. Most contracts use this data more specifically as a function invocation calling the named function and passing any encoded arguments to the function. The data payload sent to an ABI-compatible contract, which you can assume all contracts are, is a hex serialized encoding of 1. A function selector. The first four bytes of the catchac 256 hash of the function's prototype. This allows the contracts to unambiguously identify which function you wish to invoke. 2. The function arguments. The function's arguments, encoded according to the rules of the various elementary types defined in the ABI specification. In the Solidity Fawcett example, we define a function for withdrawals. Function withdraw with one argument, uint withdraw amount, public. The prototype of a function is defined as the string containing the name of the function followed by the data types of each of its arguments, and closed in parentheses and separated by commas. The function name here is withdraw, and it takes a single argument, that is a uint, so the prototype of withdraw would be withdraw, open parenthesis, uint 256, close parenthesis. Let's calculate the Kashak 256 hash of this string web3.utils.sha3 of the string withdraw uint256 the output is 0x2e1a.49f the first four bytes of the hash are 0x2e1a74d that's our function selector value which will tell the contract which function we want to call Next, let's calculate a value to pass as the argument withdraw amount. We want to withdraw 0.01 Ether. 
Let's encode that to a hex serialized big ending unsigned 256 bit integer, denominated in way. Withdraw amount equals web3.utils.2way of 0.01 ether. The output is 10 to the 17th power. Withdraw amount hex equals web3.utils.2hex of withdraw amount 0x238.000. Now we add the function selector to the amounts, padded to 32 bytes. 2e1a7d4d padded by a bunch of zeros, and then 2386.000. That's the data payload for our transaction. Invoking the withdraw function and requesting 0.01 ether as the withdraw amount. Special transaction, contract creation. One special case that we should mention is a transaction that creates a new contract on the blockchain, deploying it for future use. Contract creation transactions are sent to a special destination address called the zero address. The to field in a contract registration transaction contains the address 0x0. This address represents neither an EOA nor a contract. It can never spend Ether or initiate a transaction. It is only used as a destination, with a special meaning, creates this contract. While the zero address is intended only for contract creation, it sometimes receives payments from various addresses. There are two explanations for this. Either it is by accident, resulting in the loss of Ether, or it is an intentional Ether burn deliberately destroying Ether by sending it to an address from which it can never be spent. However, if you want to do an intentional Ether burn, you should make your intention clear to the network and use the specially designated burn address instead. 0x000.000 DEAD Warning! Any ether sent to the designated burn address will become unspendable and be lost forever. A contract creation transaction need only contain a data payload that contains the compiled bytes code which will create the contract. The only effect of this transaction is to create the contract. You can include an ether amount in the value field if you want to set the new contract up with a starting balance, but that is entirely optional. If you send a value to the contract creation address without a data payload, then the effect is the same as sending to a burn address. There is no contract to credit, so the ether is lost. As an example, we can create the faucets.sol contract used in the intro chapter by manually creating a transaction to the zero address with the contract in the data payload. The contract needs to be compiled into a bytecode representation. This can be done with a Solidity compiler. SOLC dash dash bin faucets dot SOL. The output is binary 6060 dot dot. The same information can also be obtained from the Remix Online compiler. Now we can create the transaction. The first command is source equals web3.eth.accounts, selecting the zeroth element. The second command is faucet code equals 0x606 dot dot dot. The third command is web3.eth.send transaction from source to zero data faucet code guess 113558 guess price 2 times 10 to the 12th power the output is 0x7bcc dot dot dot. It is good practice to always specify a value to parameter, even in the case of zero address contract creation, because the cost of accidentally sending your ether to 0x0 and losing it forever is too great. You should also specify a gas price and gas limit. Once the contract is mined, we can see it on Etherscan Block Explorer. We can look at the receipts of the transaction to get information about the contract. Web3.eth.get transaction receipts of 0x7bcc. The output is 
block cache 0 x 6 f a da 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 block number 3105256 contract address 0 x b 22 da 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 cumulative gas used 113558 from 0 x 2a 9 da 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 gas used 113558 locks empty list locks bloom 0 x 0 0 0 da 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 status 0 x 1 2 null transaction hash 0 x 7 b c c da 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 transaction index 0 this includes the address of the contract which we can use to send funds to and receive funds from the contract as shown in the previous section first command contract address equals 0 x b 22 da 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 Second command, web3.eth.send transaction from source to contract address value web3.utils.2way 0.1 ether data empty string. The output is 0x6ebf. After a while, the transaction is visible on Etherscan.